you want to know what it is? This is your last chance. There is no turning back. If you take If you take the blue pill, you can wake up in your seats and believe anything you would like. But if you take the TEDx pill, you can stay in Tedland, and I will give you a glimpse of how Greece has escaped the matrix and become a world leader in innovation by the year 2013. What's your choice? Blue or Ted? A very good choice. Because the other folder is empty. <laughs> Give me just a second. I'm reading a letter from 2030. Uh, but this is not really a story about where we are in 2030. It's a story about how Greece got us from 2016 to 2030. How it actually is a story about three worlds. The world of 3.0, 2030. The world of 2.0, the world of 2016, specifically October 1st, 2016 and the ancient world of 1.0. Now, Greece was instrumental in ushering 1.0 into 2.0. It did it in an amazing way. It did it through answering questions that the world had. The world had questions. Greece and Greeks had answers. The world asked, how is it possible that a small force can move something much heavier, much bigger. Who answered? The Greeks did. Archimedes discovered the principles of leverage. And this was not just a discovery of physics. This was a metaphor for Greek leadership in the ancient world. The multiplier effect of the power of ideas, the power of suggested answers to the important questions the world of the time was asking. The world asked, who should govern our societies? The Greeks did. Thank you. It's exactly right. The Greeks answered yes again, yet again. Why not the people? And democracy was born. The Greeks asked, the world asked, where are we? Where are we going? Who answered that question? The Greeks did. With Homer, with Eratosthenes, creating maps, the beginning of cartography, and not just cartography, but geography. The world asked, why are we here as human beings? And philosophers answered, but who really had the answer? The Greeks did. They taught us logic. They taught us to focus on the important question. The world asked, when should I wake up? When is that meeting? Plato answered with an alarm clock. Now, I'm not sure that's really that much of a contribution to world progress. It's certainly not a contribution to leisurely wake-ups. But it was really the beginning of time management, which itself is a principle and, and, uh, and leverage point for productivity. And Greece didn't wait until the world asked questions. Who invented epics, tragedies, comedies, drama? The Greeks did. They created stories that gave us lessons in life through art. Now, Greece did all of this by recognizing the power of ideas, the transformative multiplier power of ideas in the world, answering questions that its world at the time was asking. Now, how does it go from World 1.0 to World 2.0. And the difficulty is that on October the 1st, 2016, Greece was hurting. You don't need to tell me about how bad it was then. 
disillusionment, anxiety, disappointment, frustration, anxiety about the future. And in some ways, Greece was caught in a matrix of its own. It was missing in the ranks of world leaders. You could look at innovative economies, and Greece was nowhere to be found in the top 25, the top 30, the top 35. And these are just countries that are as big or smaller than Greece. It was nowhere to be found in something that really hurt, and that is the most creative societies in the world. Because let's face it, Greeks invented creativity. But not to be found in the list of most creative countries is galling. Now, unfortunately, also, at least a half a dozen countries, smaller than Greece, ended up on all three of these lists. Now, some Greeks looked at this list, and they said, who cares? Those countries are too cold, they're too boring, they're too controlling, they have lousy food, there's no dancing. But other Greeks saw this as a challenge and as a quest, a quest to retake the position of Greece as synonymous with innovation in the world. And they embarked upon this challenge. How can 11 million Greeks outshine at least the 55 and a half million residents of the other small countries in the world who were leading them in most creativity and most innovative economies? So how did it do this? Well, it did it by applying lessons from the past. It applied the lesson of power of ideas. It used the principle of leverage. It knew that it, it attained positions of world respect and leadership, not because of military might, not because of land, and not because of the size of the population, but because of the power and force of ideas. It became really not about celebrating or mourning the past, or commiserating about the future, if I can get this, here we go, but about projecting a new form of intellectual ideas. Now, what was interesting about this is that it, were, it was Greeks' inventions of mathematics that led to science, that led to the information revolution, that created the basis of algorithms. Those are the language of World 2.0. But Greeks decided in 2016 that they wanted something a little more Greek than just the word algorithms. So they looked into history, into their mythology, and they found Jason. And more importantly, they found the name of his boat, the Argo. And Greeks created five Argo rhythms, principles to become the language of World 3.0, to answer the new questions beseeching mankind. These were principles of innovation that the country got behind, and why not? It was Greeks' ideas that led to democracy, that led to the information revolution. Why couldn't it also be Greeks' ideas that lead to the revolution of inclusion? After all, you folks invented the word innovation. You might as well own it and project it. So let me tell you these five Argo rhythms. You can't remember your way to the future. You have to invent and build it. Argo rhythm two. Bureaucracy stifles innovation. Stop it first in classrooms, in the office, and in government. The killing of ideas is a crime against possibility and we're all guilty. Algorithm four, failure is today's lesson for tomorrow. If you're serious about innovation, entrepreneurship, you have to be serious about its dance partner, which is more often than not, failure. And finally, algorithm five, the status quo is the static quo, the biggest single obstacle to change and leadership and innovation in the world. In effect, 
Greece went from a focus on celebrating its past as ancient Greece to becoming something much more attuned with the questions of the world 3.0, a prescient Greece, a Greece that could anticipate the most important questions of the future and was prepared to leverage and project the force of those ideas and that creativity in the future the way that it had done in the past. How did it do it? First, it positioned itself as a completely new kind of marketplace. If you will, an agora, a marketplace of ideas, the way it was in the past. It did that in schools, it did that in government offices, it did it in businesses. It began to suggest que answers to questions like who wins and who loses. Who answered those questions? The Greeks did, creating a home for inclusion. In 2017, Greece announced the Lesbos Prize of Welcome to identify, recognize, and celebrate the accomplishments of communities and nations around the world who followed Greece's examples in dealing with the refugee crisis. The question, what's next? The world always asks that. What's Greece's answer to what's next? It became a home of not disruptive innovation, but eruptive innovation, inviting school classes all over the country, businesses, laboratories, to suggest new answers and new ideas. How will we save our planet? Greece had an answer. The answer was, how about a new form of international competition? The OPA Olympics of innovation. Celebrating accomplishments not about nation, national medal count, but about solutions that can benefit all mankind. These things didn't cost much money, but they did take leadership. They did take imagination. They took inspiration. And when I thought about that, and I thought about the tremendous trajectory that Greece has made, I thought about one other Greece invention. And that's the lighthouse. The lighthouse shows sailors how, to, sailors how to navigate around hazards they don't see. It looks beyond what most people can see. And it finds solutions and answers to problems that people are perplexed by. In 2013, that lighthouse showed the results of the previous 14 years. Greece had once again reclaimed its position as number one in the world of most innovative countries. And oh, by the way, those other countries that we saw earlier, let them all fight for number two or three or four. So, you took the red pill. You took the TED pill. This is what you did in 14 years. 14 years! Am I crazy? Guess what? Your ancient predecessors built that monument to creativity, to vision, in half that time. F. Haristo. <laughs>